365 here at AWS reInvent, and I'm delighted to be joined by Matt Yanchinchin, who is a VP of AWS Marketplace and Partner Services. Matt, it's been a very busy week, lots of exciting announcements. Thank you first for taking the time to uh, hop on and uh, talk with us here today. Thanks for having me. So um, we all know that uh, AI is transforming really every business process, and, and that really in includes procurement. Tell us a little bit about you know, what you're seeing, um, how you're seeing IT procurement evolve and how AWS Marketplace is really evolving to meet those needs. Yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways, procurement itself has stayed pretty similar. Like it's still sort of going through all the phases, uh, discovery, legal, finance, you know, depending on the size of the company and what you're buying. Uh, you know, you need to look at multiple products. You need to make sure you're getting the best price, the best deal, the functions you need. Uh, what is changing is how fast, you know, customers are trying to do each of those stages. And so that's where we're applying, applying AI is sort of all parts, parts of the buyer journey, whether that's discovery or evaluation or deployment. And that's really been our focus, speed. And so tell us about some of the announcements that you had around you know, meeting that speed and you know, helping customers discover and purchase solutions on the, on the marketplace. Yeah, so AWS Marketplace has about 30,000 listings from over 6,000 vendors today. So it's a lot to work through. And so we, first of all, we launched a new search experience uh, that's powered by AI. And it does things like an AI-powered summary at the top. And it uses AI uh, models like Cohere ReRank and Bedrock to, to um, uh, rank the rankings, or sorry, the results better in the search results. I think what everyone is talking about this week, though, is agent mode, mm -hmm. which is another feature that we launched for Marketplace. And that's more of a conversational interface powered by AI that walks customers through, you know, they might not know what they're looking for, like they're looking for a zero trust solution or an intelligent document processing solution. And then agent mode actually uses AI to auto-generate personalized product comparisons for things that correspond to that use case. So that way you don't need to say, hey, I'm looking for a Chen Microvision one, or I'm looking for a Zscaler ZPA. You can say, I'm looking for a zero trust solution. And then it allows you to compare you know, those and other products and then actually customize mm -hmm. those comparisons. So that, that's new and the ability to upload uh, whole RFPs and tech specs and have us parse that for you and make recommendations instead of just you know, one line searches. It's a lot more powerful and we're using a ton of AI, not just to rank search results, but to actually intelligent process your information and help you compare options to make sure you're getting the best product to meet your needs. Yeah, the one thing I love about it, this age of AI that we're in is just it really democratizes technology for you know, non-engineers like myself. This yeah. is actually probably one of the first times in you know, 20 years in tech that I could sit, watch your keynote, you doing a demo on the keynote, and then be on my laptop you know, doing, the doing the same thing yeah, and, cool. uh, and, and seeing you know, great results from uh, you know, some of the uh, you know, early experimentation that I had. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, customers are kind of out there trying at the same. Yeah, I'm glad you're doing that. That's what we want customers to do is to you know, honestly, like, stop listening to me and pick up their phone or their laptop and start running some searches themselves. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you also talked about the, the, you know, all that is around the search, the discoverability. Um, but you know, you know, velocity is right through to kind of close one. So, um, and especially in the world that we're in, sales is always about fast, fast, fast. So, yeah. um, are you doing anything, you know, post um, discoverability and search to help, um, you know? Uh, customers, you know, procure faster? Yeah, I mean, you're totally right. That's just the first phase. And I don't even think it stops at close one. You know, there's also what happens after you buy. And we're really looking at all of the phases of the buyer journey. So mm -hmm. agent mode, the Gen AI search for discovery, uh, but also for the transaction piece, we launched something called Express Private Offers. And what that does is uh, really shorten one of the longest times typically in the sales cycle, which is the negotiation. Mm -hmm. You know, most customers well, actually, a majority of customers these days buy through self-service. Over 80% of our transactions are self-service transactions. And self-service means there's, you know, there's no... Yeah, pay no one, as you go. Yeah. You know, I know what I want or I do a free trial mm -hmm. uh, and I subscribe on the spot, you know, like Amazon.com, yeah. click and go. Mm -hmm. But the bigger transactions and certainly enterprise transactions, you know, there's often a formal RFP, RFQ sure. process, and they get discounts. Mm. You know, they say, hey, what if I buy a contract for two or three years uh, and, you know, I'm a certain type of company, I, I'm, I'm good for it will you give me a discount? Most companies have a rate card right. and private, we call it private pricing or private offers. So what we launched is private pricing as a service or express private offers. And what that allows you to do is you enter some information you know, about your company, but also how long do you want your contract for? How mm -hmm. much are you buying? You know, the things that normally salespeople would collect and then negotiate. Mm -hmm. But instead of that you know, phone call, email, manual negotiation, that can take you know, weeks. We essentially say, okay, are you who you say you are? Mm -hmm. We qualify the customer based on the company information. And then do you meet X, Y, Z criteria that the seller sets up? And then we issue that private price with the discount on behalf of the seller. Mm. And that's huge. Yeah. You know, obviously it's not going to be for your massive $100 million deals. Yeah. 
but you know, maybe a ten, fifty, hundred thousand dollar deal mm -hmm. where it's a two year maybe renewal. Uh, you kind of know who the customer is. You don't necessarily need a massive sales team on that. So we can automate that private pricing automation and shorten it to minutes or seconds. And that is a, a huge deal because it's this huge middle space between fully self service and fully, you know, custom private offer. And we think customers will really love that, that AI powered automation and, and the AI power part of that is that customer qualification. Yeah, and presumably the seller on the other side can um, you know, tweak their kind of conditions based on you know, t um, their criteria, the kind of potential time of year. Yeah, exactly, they're, yeah. they're in total control. You mm -hmm. know, they, they have a rate card, they have a discount sheet, and they basically take those exact same rules and they load it into Express Private Offer. Yeah, it really is just kind of from discoverability to you know, evaluation to procurement. It's just you know, increasingly digitizing through intelligence as well, the whole the whole buyer journey, and it's it's uh, it, it's amazing to see how you know just the evolutions at kind of all stages of that uh, of that buyer journey. Now, beyond kind of the actual procurement side of things, um, how else are you helping customers you know really embrace AI within their own operations? I mean, I know you've you've launched new categories and segments around around AI. You have. Um, um, you know, you have your your own protocols and everything for helping integrate agents within their operations. So, yeah. could you talk about some of the things you're doing to you know make it easier for customers to just kind of digest AI more broadly into their into their organizations? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, some of the features I just mentioned, like agent mode. You know, you were saying you were trying it on your mm -hmm. laptop. I've been showing everyone on my phone. Uh, if you open up Anthropic Claude, like mm -hmm. the app, and you have the pro version, there's actually a, a connector marketplace, a connector catalog that they have, and there's a new AWS marketplace. Uh, connector and that's actually our agent mode feature mm. with MCP so it's an MCP server that you can then use to run those same searches that you would on marketplace through an AI powered tool right. and and that's that's really powerful because then you can not just on your laptop but on your phone using the AI tool of your choice via MCP make those you know product comparisons and it's the same thing it's the same exact information you get the reviews mm. you get the summarizations you get the product comparisons so that's sort of one way we're extending the features like some of the ones i just described into tools that customers are using every day. Mm -hmm. Increasingly, those are AI tools in your pocket. So um, another big thing is the AI agents themselves mm -hmm. and, and agentic solutions. So we launched an AI agents and tools marketplace back in July at the New York Summit. Yep. We talked about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that has grown substantially. So we, we originally started with a target of 50 listings in, the, in that category of the marketplace. And I told my team, I always like to say, add a zero. <laughs> and they added a zero and then some. At launch in July, we had over 800. Uh, AI agents and tools in the new category, and that's since grown to over 2,000. Wow. So I think that's that's amazing growth, but honestly, that's not as much what matters. Like, we can have the biggest catalog in the world. What matters is that customers are increasingly consuming them. We're seeing a really large number of both self-service mm -hmm. and private offers for actual agents. And I think, you know, we were just saying that it doesn't stop at discovery. What makes this special is not just having the agents on Marketplace, but we make it really easy to then deploy those agents into Amazon Bedrock Agent Core. Yeah. So you can start to use those agents right away. Because you know, Gartner, for example, has a ton of research that uh, up to 25% of all SaaS applications like rarely, if ever, get used. And that, you know, I think it's pretty true based on what mm -hmm. I see. And, and the same can be true for agents. So the mm -hmm. more easy we can make it to find the agent you need in the marketplace and then deploy that agent to Bedrock Runtime and Gateway so you can start using that agent, the happier the customer is. So again, that same buyer journey applies to the new agent category. Yeah. I think going back to discoverability, I think there was a time where you could almost think that like just the degree to which the catalog is growing could just become too much of a minefield. But, mm -hmm. but I guess now with AI tools and and just just the different ways of discoverability based on you know kind of customer needs, it, it almost doesn't matter how many is out there, right? Because these like AI can really sort through and and, and find it and you know to your just very specific needs. Oh, you're totally right. You know, I, we all we spent a lot of time previously thinking about. How much is enough? You know, what mm -hmm. kind of size catalog should we have? How many vendors? And you're right. You know, with the new AI powered search and agent mode, uh, it doesn't matter as much. You know, because you these are powerful AI tools. Like we use Anthropic Cloud. I yeah. mentioned Cogear ReRank. We use Nova, mm -hmm. and they can really quickly parse through huge amounts of information and help you zero into the specific product that best meets your need. Yeah, it's almost now probably more is better, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Amazon.com has known that for years, yeah, right? Yeah. And you know, that's why they have powerful, powerful search and tools, uh, AI tools like Rufus, mm -hmm. and you know, we're applying a B2B context to that for software and professional services buying on the marketplace. But no name like Rufus uh, for your... For your <laughs> <laughs> well, if you saw the keynote yesterday, you would have seen I was wearing a dog, a uh -huh. cartoon dog, so 
maybe it was a bit of a shout out to Rufus. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but no, you know, we're, we're serious enterprise. Buyers, so, yeah. <laughs> We've talked a lot, um, you know, so far about the customer journey, but yeah. um, I, I think the other important side of, um, you know, obviously what you do and, you know, making it success for those customers is to have a good experience for, you know, all your, um, all your partners that are um, on the marketplace and providing, you know, software and, 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 and services. So yeah. are, have there been any kind of, um, you know, if you put your innovation engine to kind of uh, help some of uh, uh, some of that side of the camp? And yeah, first of all, yeah, first of all, I mean, my title is actually AWS Marketplace and Partner Services. So mm -hmm. I, I wear two hats. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time focusing on the customer experience, how, how they discover partners and solutions they need, but also the partners themselves. So first of all, you know, just starting with the marketplace, we launched something that also definitely benefits customers, but partners are really excited about called multi-product solutions. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, if you look at the marketplace, we were just talking about listings. There are about 30,000 listings. 10,000 of those are actually professional services listings, mm. like people services. Yeah. And those professional services providers like Presidio or Accenture or Deloitte, they uh, want to more effectively sell their services along software. And many of them are selling software now. And so we give them the ability to package up software and services from multiple vendors mm -hmm. in a multi-product solution uh, listing that they can then sell and go to market with us to customers. So that's really powerful because a huge benefit of working with AWS is our go-to-market, you know, helping you co-sell. And it's easier to co-sell with us if you have a customer use case specific multi-product solution that combines professional services from our partners with software from one or more vendors. That gives us a solution-based sale mechanism, mm -hmm. and all of our partners want solution-based co-selling. Yeah, absolutely. So that that's definitely you know something we launched with multi-product solutions, and something we're focused on. On the more back end for partners, mm -hmm. it's you know just like we were talking about making procurement faster for customers is so important. The same for partners. If they can't make their operations like their cost of sale low and be efficient, then you know they're going to have lower margins and their operating costs are gonna be higher. Mm -hmm. So we launched a Partner Central 3.0 in the, in the console. We moved our main interface that partners use to do business with customers into the AWS Marketplace console. Okay. And in and of itself, it's like, you know, that, that's just a move. But with that move, we launched a bunch of new APIs and also more sophisticated access control. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're an alliance manager that does something really specific, you can get access to do that specific thing. So you can then, Think of the personas in your partner organization and assign them really specific duties and give them permission to do those things either on the partner central website or programmatically via our new APIs, like right. a benefits API. You can go and request those credits without picking up the phone and, and calling you know, someone on the programs team. Mm -hmm. So it allows them to move faster, lower their cost of operations, integrate their partner tooling into their CRMs and ERPs and other systems that they're using. Mm -hmm. So the same applies to partners in customers. Through a mix of you know AI agents, API integrations, uh, more sophisticated access management, they can operate more efficiently. We want to be the best place for them to grow their business, but also the most efficient place to operate. I always say like the buyer and the seller side, it's the it's two sides of the same coin, right? 100%. Like you, you can't yeah. have like everything you're trying to achieve on customer velocity side of things, you, you can't achieve if you're not putting those same kind of innovations and mechanisms for you know your sellers to be able to to meet the customers at the speed that they want. Yeah, we have you know hundreds of thousands of customers and you know three million plus uh, subscribers on mm -hmm. the marketplace. Like at that scale, mm -hmm. to meet that customer demand, you need to be able to operate really efficiently, and your cost of sales can't be high. Mm -hmm. you, you need to have good operations, and to do that these days, you need to use AI, you need to use uh, API-based uh, integrations, and Otherwise, you know, we won't be able to capitalize on all of the customer needs and all the business out there. Yeah. One thing as well, you've kind of touched on, and I should come back to it on your your, your announcement with the cloud and Anthropic. Um, yeah. It's almost, um, I almost see this as kind of an extension or a different lens of um, uh, the, the buy with AWS that you, I think, announced last um, last year. Yeah. Um, it, it's really increasing the surface plane of where marketplace is right it's it's now it's not just about coming on to you know awsmarketplace.com it's 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 making sure that you can get access to and kind of benefit from all that kind of discoverability and power wherever you want to kind of start your buyer journey right yeah you're, you're 100 right I, we we call it meeting customers where they are and we were focusing and we continue to focus on aws services like if you get oracle db through rds or if you buy a third party a partner add-on through our kubernetes service eks or we just launched uh, partner integrations in our network firewall service. Mm. There are a number of AWS services where we extend marketplace listings to be surfaced there. Because if you're a Kubernetes administrator, 
you're in the Kubernetes console, the ER EKS console, and that's where we're, we want to put the marketplace listings. Mm -hmm. So we have like this concept of, of embedded listings and sort of mini marketplaces like Bedrock Marketplace and all these other marketplaces that are powered by the marketplace. But what we did with Byway with AWS is extend that beyond the walls of AWS. So now partners like Databricks can have their marketplace listing on their website or mm -hmm. in their application because that's where their customers show up. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that the conversion rates on those you know, they go from free trial to marketplace purchase without ever leaving their application mm -hmm. are way higher. Yeah. So that that's really proven out as a model and we're taking it to the next step. Uh, we just announced an acquisition of phoenix.ai mm -hmm. and that's a, a storefronts company. They, they do a lot of things for procurement, but one of the great things that they've done is build uh, procurement portals really in storefronts for third party partners. And that will allow us to further embed marketplaces and whole procurement purchasing experiences into enterprise procurement portals mm -hmm. or or channel partner procurement portals. So I'm really excited about, you know, essentially exposing our partners in more places so they can reach more customers and do more business. Because SMB customers, line of business buyers, they all have, they all show up in different places and we want to be everywhere they are. Well, it's a busy week on top of all the announcements, uh, announcing an acquisition at the start of the week. Um, yeah, we, a, <laughs> we were high-fiving each other last night. It's very exciting. So. Um, all right, so I guess getting close to wrap and. I think this is an unfair question given, you know, just how much you're, uh, you guys have been sprinting to kind of get all these uh, latest uh, in innovations out and all the releases out um, this week at reInvent. But now kind of like looking forward, where are you pointing your compass kind of from an innovation standpoint? I mean, you know, just directionally, what are some of the things that you're kind of, you know, you and your team are prioritizing in terms of, um, you know, continuing on this kind of um, AI journey and within the, within the marketplace? Yeah, well, well, first of all, I'm no different from my customers and my partners in the sense that my own team needs to also, you said sprinting, mm -hmm. we're sprinting much more efficiently with AI ourselves. Mm -hmm. you know, we launched 27% more features year to date, and we're about 31% if you normalize it, like how we measure developer productivity, software development productivity, 31% more productive year to date as well. So we're shipping more features, more code uh, to keep up with the demand, you know, because we expect multi-product uh, solutions, express private offers, agent mode, to continue to do well, and you know the re reaction has been great. And with reaction comes many feature requests, and we're going to have to keep up with those feature requests. So I think continuing to focus on how we ourselves, my engineering team as a customer, can continue to use the same AI tools, Bedrock and Agent Core, to be efficient ourselves, so we can keep up with this growing demand. That that's a top priority. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time thinking about how can we ourselves move faster, so, so we can keep up with those needs. And I think it's really doubling down on what we started. We're just getting started with the AI and automation when it comes to the partner journey. Uh, you should expect to see a lot of agentic capabilities in Partner Central uh, down the pike. And for buyers, uh, Express Private Offers is just the beginning, as is agent mode. You know, we're doing product comparisons with first and third party data powered by AI. We're doing pricing uh, as a service. But there are a lot of other parts of the buyer journey. There are legal parts, there are other finance parts, there are governance risk and compliance parts that I know I can make faster. <laughs> and I know that as AI continues to improve these things that were previously unimaginable, mm -hmm. you know, touching those parts of the procurement journey and, and really compressing the time are possible now. Yeah. So uh, and we're, we're really, it's, I know it's kind of cliche in the Amazon sense, but it is truly day one for us. Mm -hmm. And the buyer journey is large and complex and there are a lot of parts that we'll continue to push on. I, I really call it, saw in your eyes there when you kind of highlighted all those different functions and talking about trying to make them faster. So. Uh, uh, no doubt, I could see uh, the the innovation kind of. Uh, I was projecting to next reinvent <laughs> yeah. already. Yeah, for sure. yeah absolutely. So. Um, so Matt, thank you so much again for taking the time to uh, to speak with us. I know it's been a, a very busy week for you here at reinvent. Uh, congrats to you and the team for all the uh, announcements, and um, yeah, look forward to uh, catching up again uh, in in the future. And to, to all of you that are tuning in, uh, thank you so much for taking the time and uh, stay tuned. We're also speaking with some of. Uh, the Marketplace partners shortly to hear about their experience and journey on the AWS Marketplace.